This segment's being sponsored by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, everybody, this next segment's being sponsored by Taylor's Archery. Y'all can find them at 100 East Lauderdale Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Or give owner Tracy Taylor a call at 931-563-7706 and get down there and enjoy their indoor shooting facility. Let Tracy and Cam get you set up for this coming season. You'll be all ready to go for the August time. It'll be here before we know it, guys. Yes, sir. It will not be long. All right, if y'all want to start calling in, we're going to open up the phone line to 615-737-776. And while we're waiting on some of these calls to get started, Wes, we mentioned a little bit earlier there, there's a method that you have got that helps you get a lot of deer surveyed. It's, it's been very successful for you. And uh, I've talked to you enough about it. We're actually fixing to start this at a couple of our places and, and see how it works for us. But this is something you can do in these West Tennessee areas where you can't use mineral anymore and you can't use feed or anything like that supplementally. Um, so let's just tell everybody a little bit about what it is. Right. I, I've become a hard believer in this, and I've really dug into it deep the last few years. But basically, you know, you know how deer communicate year-round with licking branches, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's basically how they tell each other, you know, I'm here. You know, basically, it's a, it's a their most prominent form of communication. Yeah. But the what I've discovered is the use of rope scrapes. And what I've been doing is taking a three quarter inch to one inch diameter hemp rope and tie it in a place that you wouldn't normally see like a scrape show up the edge of a field and fray the end of the rope, hang it down where that deer visually, it's just a visual attraction to them, just like that lower hanging mm -hmm. limb. But something about that lower hanging limb just attracts them to start using it like a licking branch. Yeah. And I've just, I've discovered that hanging in the right place this rope scrapes will inventory every deer using that area because if they come through there they're going to come check it out yep. and and when we're talking about pre-orbital or orbital or licking branches what i want to explain on that too a little bit to those that may not know there are particular glands in a deer's face especially in his eyes around the bases of his antlers that they will rub uh, vines, you know, naturally, you know, vines, fence posts, whatever it may be, and it rubs these scents off, okay, and it tells, like Wes explained, it tells this deer that this deer is in the area, and so on and so forth. It's a communication tool. So what they're doing is they're basically using this rope to do that. So exactly. this buck's coming through, and he's he's marking it, and later on this next buck comes through, and he's marking it. That's a great way to figure out yeah. what's yeah, going on. I, I discovered it first from uh, year, several years ago uh, from a, a grapevine actually I found in the woods in May I thought the deer was maybe using it like a licking branch put a camera on it and that grapevine was inventory in every deer on that farm yeah and that progressed into the hemp rope and using the using the rope scrapes yeah uh, they seem to just it just and it works itself once one starts you yeah. know, he puts his scent on it, the next one put its scent on it, and it just works itself right. from then on. Now, when you started out, you said you don't have to, but you can start out with some kind of scent on there if you want. You can. You said you like to use an orbital scent or yeah. something like that to get it started. Yeah, scent, uh, something like that. Um, you know, I've, and I've done it without anything, and it works itself. Yeah, you just know, clear just, the ground. Just the visual itself, you know, kind of scrape back the ground around it. Yeah. I like to, to keep the, the bottom of the rope, you know, two to say three feet from yep. the ground, fray yep. the bottom about six inches and put your scent in there yep. and uh, hmm. usually put a haul green around Just the road to keep, keep it from, from tearing more, more I guess and yeah. uh, then it's it I'm works. looking forward to trying it. Wait, we've yeah. got, I've already got me a spot in my Man, opinion. Tell you, uh, he got his uh, wheel starting uh, over here yeah. now. He's like, mm hmm. Yeah. He's got it in his supply scent. He can use it. <laughs> yeah. You know. He can have ropes hanging all over the place. <laughs> Man, I, yeah, my woods are going to be looking like a, a jungle gym. Yeah, with all these ropes hanging yeah. everywhere. It's a, I, I just think it's a, it's a great concept, and we have used scrapes to inventory bucks for a long time, um, but it's hard to find sometimes those licking branches. They're out there naturally, but they're not as easy to find as a rub right. or a scrape or something like that. It's not always as visual. Sometimes you'll just see some broken off overhanging yeah. limbs. It'll, you know, it's not as visual, whereas you're taking that rope and you're, you're basically creating that for them. Yeah. And, and once they start hitting it, there, I, I have can. like just four or five years straight of many 
camera photos and you know a lot of history with yeah. using these i mean um they work yeah and they know. and and also you mentioned you found the other one in may so i mean this is a year-round thing year -round. is my point it's not you don't have to wait to the rut where they're mm -hmm. going to start hitting as a matter of no. fact i'm sure there's going to be times of year when they're going to be heavier on it and times of year when yeah. it, they're going to back off of it a little yeah. bit and just like they would a typical one don't get discouraged if they don't hit it right off yeah you know sometimes they you might get on it slower and it might take time but yeah you know i usually put mine out you know of course i have some that's year round but if yeah. it's on a new place i try to get it out even like january february so yeah. i mean either the sooner the better but if it's in the right place you know you can soak the soak the hemp rope in bacon soda and water that yeah. gets the scent out of it or you could probably soak it in some of this stuff and get the <laughs> spray think, that stuff I, and get I the scent that off might of it. take the scent of it out and, uh, you know yeah absolutely and then go from there but yeah. it needs to be like i guess the best way to describe it if you walk on the edge of a field and you look down the edge of a field and and just you know by your experience you look and say i bet there's a scrape under that tree there in deer season that's the kind of spot somewhere you want like to hang that this, this doesn't really matter how up. you have it hanging up just as so long as it's at that mark off the ground right, right there you should be good to go yeah. and and one last thing too to kind of note about it and you mentioned the size of rope but you told me earlier you had started with maybe a three-quarter yeah. or, or a smaller rope and you're saying now you're going to be one inch and bigger i, I, I think i like the, the one inch bigger just because the wind don't carry yeah. quite as easily picture camera up, and, I'm sure. uh, yeah you, you'll get a lot of swinging rope pictures yeah and then really once you know they're on it i just kind of pull it off just slightly because the rope because you know swing. they're gonna come to it yeah i yeah. know that they're hitting it yeah. yeah well that that is a a great way uh to inventory deer again i can't wait to try the rope myself i have yeah. tried scrapes and things and i got a lot of pictures that way and mineral sites but again now you've got areas even in tennessee where you can't use those yeah. mineral sites and that's what we typically use you know that's what we're used to and me so. and my buddy todd basher we came you know we it was a long process getting to the ropes and we thought we were we had come up with something yeah and then we found out later that barry and gene wenzel was doing it 25 years ago yeah and, isn't it uh, amazing how that hey, stuff I kind of back that, around i thought, yeah. thought he had a secret Look, no, no, man, was, was already over here he was ready to patent some ropes uh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, no, I, 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 I can't take sisters. credit for that, no, and, and then, you know, this word started to get around on the rope scrapes. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times, but I came these about tactics make their way back around. Like from the grapevine starting out, yeah. you know. Oh, Just I've happened to find like it. that before. Somebody else has already been doing it, you know, 30, 40 years yeah. ago, and I'm like, yeah, you think you have that yeah, idea thought, that ever mm -hmm. was invented. Um, but there's only so much new technology that can come out, you know, and, and eventually we're, we come back around to, to old things again, just like old school, anything else. Well, I've always yeah, said yeah. The last couple of years, you know, with the use of trail cameras, and I've been kind of digging into the licking branch stuff really deeper, and, you know, I feel like on most properties, anyhow, there's that licking branch that's being used similar to what the rope scrape you're just mimicking with the rope scrape yeah that kind of dominant licking branch that's out there on a lot of properties that you can get trail camera photos like that if you if you know that right yeah. limb i mean um, that, that's that's a real good way to do it. and this is the time of year um we're like y'all we don't go in there and disturb a whole lot this time of year but it doesn't bother me to go in there and and set up you know we're in there moving cameras around now and uh kind of getting set up where we think we need to be started to get our summer inventory um but i you know when we go in there in the summer and i know you do this a lot the same way too we have this hunter's mentality a lot of time of sneak in and sneak around and do but you know i'll be honest i'm kind of the exact opposite of that in the summer if i'm going to go in there and work on something i'm probably going Gonna drive my truck or my side by side all the way up to where I'm gonna be working, do what I gotta do. Because those deer see farmers coming in and out of there, guys are coming in cutting hay, they're coming in working on fence rows, and you know, they're not parking their truck down here and walking 200 yards to go work on their fence row, they're gonna drive right up to it. So, a lot of times, I'll just use that concept, it works great for Jack and I on the properties we do. Just go right in there and do what you gotta do and get out of there. Don't right. put a bunch of sitting down, waste a bunch of time, right. but don't go out there and try to sneak around and sweat your butt off all summer. Just drive up there and do what you got to do and get out of there well sometimes you know? that noise especially when they're used to it a little bit as long as you're not intruding yep. back in the woods yeah uh you know it's given that 
that deer a time to react. And get out of the you way know? before it ever and sees you. It hears yeah. the motor coming or something. Hey, it's just a car. They're out of the way. Yeah. No big deal. Well, guys, we're going to get ready to go over right now and do this week's tip of the week. And this week's tip of the week's being sponsored by our friend West Stone over at Cryolite <laughs> Realtors. You can find him at 1432 West Main Street in London, Tennessee, or you can give him a call at his office there, 615-444-8200. Let West take care of all your real estate needs. He's a pretty good guy, ain't he? Uh, he's, he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> Paris, what do you got for us, man? You got a tip for us tonight? Well, I, I, you know, at this time, it's not just uh, during deer season, but right now, people messing with deer stands and everything. Like, I just went and took a bunch down. Where that safety harness? Because, you know, you let That's that right. stand up there all winter long. Now you want to take it down. Hey, the, you know, I've seen them uh, straps break before people yep. get on them. Still wear the safety harness. You know, don't take it for granted. That's right. It's as know. important right now yeah, as a, it is know, when you're hunting all hey, day. Your family's matter. depending on you to get home. So, that's right. Uh, but yeah, stay with that uh, safety harness at all times. That's yep. that's good tip right there. You definitely you're, want to do that. You're right that. because that's what your your guards down then. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, usually because you're you're, you're in a routine. You're trying to I mean, yeah. Yeah. buddy, it's an extra hundred degrees with all that yeah. stuff on. But man, it, it's worth it. It'd be worth it. You ever slip and it catches you? It'd be worth it. Hundred degrees. You know it. So great tip there, guys. We're gonna. Get ready to go over and take another quick break. We'll be back here in just a minute with some more Southern Wizard Waters.